right, here we are, E3 Day 2, bright and early. I've got Jacob Minkoff, who is the lead designer on The Last of Us at Naughty Dog. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Great, great. So you guys just showed us uh, a, kind of a, a more extended version of the demo you guys had at the press conference the other day, but it wasn't exactly the same demo because you played it very differently. Um, kind of give us an idea of what the range of choices you're going to have uh, is in a situation like that where, you know, at the press conference it was kind of all out combat, a lot more shooting, a lot more blowing guys' faces off with shotguns, uh, and here it was a lot more stealthy. Like, kind of what's the, what's the gradation of, of possibilities in a situation like that? Sure. Uh, so... The Last of Us is um, a really, really systems-driven game for us. For, for, for us, what we wanted to do was make a game that has a lot of player choice. We're, uh, we're calling it wide linear. We're telling a linear story, but the player has a wide variety of choices and places that they can go in terms of the combat scenarios and, and exploring the world. Uh, so the player can uh, completely skip all of the enemy encounters in that uh, in that demo we showed on stage. You can stealth past everybody, but in that case you're making a choice. You're saying, I'm stealthing past these guys and I'm going to be safe, but I'm not going to get any of their supplies, right? And this is uh, a brutal, bleak world where you need to constantly scavenge for supplies. You know, you saw guys opening drawers and stuff, right? If, if somebody opens a drawer and gets a supply out of it, you're not going to get that supply unless you kill them and take it off their body. So you have to make that choice. Do I engage with them and bring risk to myself, but potentially get more supplies, or do I stealth past them and move on? And all of those are completely open options to the player. Kind of an interesting way to turn stealth on its head, because a lot of people play, you know, a game like Deus Ex, they want to do a completely non-lethal playthrough as like sort of like a moral imperative, you know, just because they don't want to kill people, but like you guys are you're offering kind of a mechanical trade-off, you know, like you're, you're actually making sacrifices to take the moral high road. Is that kind of where that idea came from? Absolutely. Well, we, we want you to feel what it's really like to live in a brutal post-pandemic world where everything's broken down, there's no electricity, government has fallen apart, and you have all these little groups of different survivors across the U.S. Some of them will be your allies, some of them band together and try to strive for the best morals of humanity, and some people are like just scrabbling for whatever they can get. They'll kill you for three bullets and a half a bottle of alcohol, right? So you always need to meet somebody and say, oh, well, are these people going to kill me? And we released that, uh, that cinematic trailer uh, a couple weeks ago showing the guys uh, ambush Joel and Ellie in the truck. Well, the guys we show on stage here are that same group of people. These are what we're calling the hunters. They, they um, ambush people who enter their city. They call those people tourists, and they take them out and take their supplies. So yeah, we, we want you to feel that in real life, you'd have to make those choices, right? If you see another human being and they have something you need to survive, you could potentially just go off and kill them, especially if you know that they would do the same to you given the chance. But we still want you to feel that each human life matters, right? When you kill one of these guys, we actually want you to feel a little bad about it because that was a person. But there but for the grace of God go I sort of thing, right? Are there going to be characters that are not just kill on sight? I mean, are you going to kind of have a range of, of motivations for, for a lot of the survivors that you see? Absolutely. Uh, you know, at Naughty Dog, we're all about character-driven narrative. Uh, for us, the, the plot isn't the cool thing. It's all about human interactions. We created the world of The Last of Us because we wanted to see what it meant to live in that world and how different people would react. So over the course of the game, there will be a wide array of different people and personalities that you meet, different allies you meet. We're not ready to go into that just yet, but I mean, there's going to be a really, really interesting dynamic between Joel and Ellie and the other people that they meet. Now, uh, AI sidekicks in games, maybe maybe a little bit of a spotty reputation over time, uh, but you talk about this being a systems-driven game, does that mean that uh, you're never going to be kind of manually commanding Ellie to, to assume different behaviors? Is she just going to kind of keep an eye on what you're doing and mimic that and stay out of the way? How is that, uh, that interaction going to work? Well, for us, uh, the the big goal with uh, The Last of Us was to make all of these NPCs in the game feel like people. And that goes doubly for Ellie. Uh, the whole game is based around this relationship that Joel and Ellie build up between them. Ellie is a very, very capable character. Yeah, she's just a 14-year-old girl, but she's grown up in this very harsh society, so she's had to sneak and find food and bring herself up, and who knows what happened to her parents, right? She's had a hard life. And so she's very, very capable. And from player perspective, we want you to feel like she's an indispensable tool. We want you to feel 
that you love having her around and she's so helpful in battle that you know you you really feel her missing when when you're separated from her at the end of the demo we just showed you you see that they get separated briefly and it's going to be really hard to survive on your own Ellie is completely capable of taking care of herself. She scavenges the environment, finds things that are useful, offers bullets that she might find to you if they're good for your gun. You saw her pick up a brick in the stage demo and then keep it around until she saw you were out of ammo, and then she chose to flank the enemy and attack them. So she's just always going to be taking care of herself and being a benefit to you, and we hope that that further cements your, the, the relationship between Joel and Ellie. You'll see their relationship being built as Joel, who's lived in this world, um, had to learn to survive, crossed every moral line he had to cross, gone to a really dark place, now teaches Ellie to become even more capable over the course of the game, gives her more and more skills. And we hope that you as the player feel the benefit of all those skills and, and feel that same love and loyalty and care for this person going through the journey with you. I saw something at the beginning of the demo that I personally perceived as kind of a dig at Nathan Drake's kind of superhuman gymnastic abilities where Joel was walking around in this area with a lot of scaffolding and stuff and he needed to get to the top and Drake would have scaled that, that sheer wall in, you know, three seconds, but Joel had to walk around and find a, a ladder, you know, like they, there seemed to be more of a focus on, on like, you know, the, the limited abilities of, re of a realistic human, you know. Uh, was that, is that a conscious choice, like, the, that these characters are not going to have superhuman capabilities that they're going to have to really work with the means at hand to, to surmount these problems? Absolutely. Uh, we, we're making a very, very grounded world. Again, we want you to feel like this is what it would be like in order to survive. You know, it's not a dig at Nathan Drake, that's just a different type of game. Sure. That's, that's more of a heroic thing. Mm -hmm. These guys aren't heroes. Yeah. These guys are normal people just like you or I, and we want you to play this game and ask yourself, man, if I was put in this situation, how would I react? What would I do? You know, uh, not just from a physical perspective, as you see, where yes, I mean, you are physically limited, uh, but also from an emotional perspective. If, if you uh, if you had lost everyone that you loved, if, if every day you had to fight for survival, could you still be what we would consider a good person? Or would you just start being like, I don't care, I just need to eat, I'm just whatever, I'm going to do anything I need to survive. And you know, that's really where Joel has gone. And to see Ellie, who hasn't quite gone to that dark place yet, to still have this innocence, you know, that's the interesting thing. There's like this father-daughter love relationship between them, uh, where Joel wants to protect Ellie's innocence, but still needs to teach her how to survive in this world. And it's, it's this love story of loyalty and survival that we're telling, and, and the limitations of the characters really play into that. Cool. Uh, so, without giving too much away, I mean, you guys have mostly shown off interactions between your characters and some hostile NPCs. Uh, how would you characterize the stretches of the game that only involve, you know, Joel and Ellie? I mean, in between, you know, the, 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 the moments where you're punctuating the, the journey with these interactions, like, are we talking about a lot of kind of environmental puzzle solving or just sort of moving through the environment? Like, what's going to be occupying you there? Well, there's definitely a lot of environmental puzzle solving. You saw that in the uh, the extended demo that we just showed, uh, where we unfortunately had to cut down the stage demo for time. You know, we only have six minutes on stage. But there is uh, an environmental puzzle that we solve in the hotel lobby, where you have to find the ladder, boost Ellie up, uh, find the cart, push it over to the wall. And all of those elements uh, are things that we'll be leveraging in environmental puzzle solving. There will also be traversal, and a big pillar of our game is scavenging. It's all about finding the supplies that you need in order to survive. You saw on stage, we used a, uh, a bandage and a bottle of alcohol to craft a Molotov cocktail. But those same ingredients can create a health kit. And it's this choice between offense and defense that the player's going to have to make. And we do really want you to explore the environment and find all of these different supplies that can help you. In addition, behind uh, closed doors, we also showed the interaction with the movie poster and also the dead bodies. And so the more you explore, the more you see these conversations between Joel and Ellie as they talk more about their personal motivations and re react to things in the world. So you'll find both additional story and lots of extra supplies by going around the world. Every player is going to have a different experience with the, uh, the story elements and the dialogue that they get. We have developed a new rules-based 
robust uh, vocal system uh, that determines what the player has been doing, how much ammunition you have, how much you've been scavenging, what things you're looking at, uh, all of these different rules that it's taking into account. And it will cause the, the player uh, character and, and Ellie to talk with each other in different ways based on what the player is doing. You okay? It's not it. We have all these different story tidbits that can be divulged thematically appropriate to what the player is doing. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of that too, all as you explore the environment. So you guys are out this holiday, is that right? Uh, we haven't announced no, a uh, release date. Yet. Fair, no. fair enough. Well, uh, where are you guys at in development? I mean, are you kind of content locked? Is it is it playable from start to finish at this point, and you're kind of polishing and tweaking, or are you still building out the the fundamentals? What's uh, what's the state right now? I think it's safe to say that we have a lot of work to do, okay. and and we're excited to show you a lot more about the game. Fair enough. Well, we'll leave it at that. Jacob, thanks a lot for your time. Sure. Thank you so much.